What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So if you've been here before, thanks for tuning in to yet another video and if you're new here, please get down there and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. So if you've been following the vlogs, I actually went to go get a haircut a couple days ago and when I parked and I turned the car off, I heard like a crack behind the dashboard of the Jeep. Later that night, we went out with me, Emily and Melanie and my side, I was driving, right? And my side was hot, like we had the heater on in the whole car. My side was hot, her side was cold, and the back was cold as well. So I did a little research and apparently it's a common issue for the Blendor actuator gears to break on those things. So I decided to take a look before ordering anything as you can see right here. Look what we have here. So the gear, this is half of it, broke off of the Blendor actuator right here. The rest of it is up there. So yeah, basically I got half of the gear right here. So we have to go ahead and replace this. The gear is about like 22 to $23, something like that. So let me show you guys how to replace this so that if you guys ever have this problem, you know exactly how to fix it. It's actually pretty easy. All right, so I had to go throw on a hoodie because it is freezing outside. But anyways, when I first came out and looked up in there, um, I was actually able to take the gear off. The gear is or the actuator is actually right here, as you can see. I just left it dangling. I was actually able to get it off with these three tools right here. So a trim panel popper, basically to get these little clips off. There's three on the bottom that go along the bottom of the glove box. You need a long quarter inch ratchet and a short, I think this is like an inch and a half uh, extension. I used an electric ratchet just because it's easier and faster and then I use these little Torx bits that I have I will post a link to these if you guys want to get some yourselves it's a whole set and they come in very handy very often so I don't know if my little panel right here is actually ripped right here or if it comes that way um, if you guys have done it or if you guys do it and come across this let me know if yours is the same way because I don't know if mine is ripped or if it's supposed to be like that all right so i'm gonna take the glove box off i probably don't need to but i want to have as much room as possible to show you guys exactly what i'm doing and i want to be able to line the gear up properly so i'm gonna take all of this off and show you guys exactly how it's done all right so you guys just saw me taking the glove box off um, the first thing you have to do is you have to take a little retractor that's here, which is this little thing right here. Um, just pull it down, then pop it out, and then let this thing retract all the way up. Then you want to squeeze these tabs. There's one here and one on the other side. Squeeze them and then pull them down so you can get them out of these little slots right here. Once you do that, all you have to do is pull up and then these three clips on the bottom rest on these three down here and it just pops out and you can put it aside. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this plastic off. I think it's held by these four sevens right here. And I think they should pop out, let's find out. All right guys, so I had the seat controls going crazy over here. I forgot how far back this thing folds down. Um, but basically I got this plastic off. Um, let me show you guys. What I didn't know was these two rubber grommets that it has here, there's actually bolts inside of them and they're T20s, same as the actuator bolts. So yeah, use the T20 for these two and they come out. And then once you get those four seven millimeter bolts off of the bottom and those two in the little rubber grommets up top. Do not be afraid to pull on it pretty hard. The clips are on there pretty freaking good. So yeah, just pull on it and it'll come off. So now that we got this off, we can see exactly where our gear or the rest of the gear is. The gear is actually right up here and there's plenty of room to work with. And with these tools right here, you can take the actuator on and off 
So this is the actuator right here. You can take this on and off as a bolt here and a bolt here and it just comes right off. Okay, so this is the piece that goes into the white part right there. And then the gear goes onto the actuator like that. So this is all that's left from mine and this is what it's supposed to look like. So basically what you want to do is there's a big wide tooth right there and there is a big wide gap in the gears on this. So you want to line it up like that so that everything flows smoothly as it should. So make sure it goes in like that and then you should be good to go. All right, so I got the actuator with the new gear on. Now it's moment of truth. I got my laser temperature gun and we're gonna see if it shoots the same temperature throughout the whole car. All right, so right now they feel about the same temperature. They're pretty cold, both of them, because I just started it. So that says 50. Can't see it, but that one says 54. Let's see. Yep, 54. So right now they're at the same temperature, but it is cold. I just started it for the day. So I'm gonna let it warm up, get to temp, and then we'll see if it really is shooting the same temp. All right, so temperature started to rise, so, and I can feel that it's hot now. So let's go ahead and see. So it was reading about 94. And about 100. There we go, it's coming down. So it varies because it's not pointing at anything in specific. But yeah, they're both hot now. So problem fixed. Now I have to go ahead and throw everything back on. Basically just repeat the steps you did to take everything off in reverse to put everything on and you should be good to go. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right guys, and just like that, we're all back together. Everything is working and we can stay warm now. So just to recap on the tools I use, um, flashlight is optional, you can use your phone. Long quarter inch ratchet with a one and a half inch extension. You want a seven millimeter for the bolt on the bottom of the plastic. The trim tool for the clips and one of these sockets, like I said, I will post links to all the tools that I use or something very similar in the description in case you guys need them and or don't have them. I use this Ryobi temperature gun, but this you don't really need. I just wanted to prove to you guys that I actually did fix it. And this is the part number for 
the gear itself. You can get those at the dealership if you have one close to you, but if you don't, um, I'm gonna try to see if Amazon sells one and I'll post a link to that in the description as well. That way you guys can just go to the description and get everything you need to do this job so you guys can stay warm or hot depending on what season it goes bad on you. So I'm glad we were able to fix this because like I said, we were getting pretty cold in this car and it was not fun. I'm also glad that it only took about 30 minutes to do it. So if you guys have any mechanical experience, you can probably do it in like 25 to 35 minutes. And if you're new to all this, you can probably do it in about 45 minutes. It's really not hard at all. So that's going to conclude this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys learned how to replace your own gear so that you don't have to pay the dealership. I've heard people say they've paid upwards of $500 for this. So just pay the 20 some bucks for the gear itself and do it yourself. So let me get off your screen now. Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, keep moving forward and stay on the gas.